Hello. As soon as your baby is born, the umbilical cord is still attached to the baby and that umbilical cord is attached to the placenta. And the placenta is still attached to the uterus. It takes about 3 to 5 minutes normally for a placenta to be delivered. So the routine management about 10 years ago was as soon as the baby is delivered, we would then cut the cord and give the baby to the pediatrician and the pediatrician would do their thing. So research over the last 10 years has shown very clearly that uh, we sh probably should not be cutting the cord so soon. Research suggests that if we were to delay the cord clamping at least for a minute and maybe up to three minutes, a lot of the blood, sometimes 80 to 100 ml of the blood which is in the placenta and in the cord will go to my baby. And the baby really needs that blood because this blood contains a lot of hemoglobin, it contains a lot of red blood cells, it contains a lot of immunoglobulins which will provide our baby with immunity and also it contains a lot of stem cells which would help the baby's reproductive growth as it grows. And specifically in premature babies, if we delay the cord clamping, it has been shown that the baby has a decreased chance of developing a particular disorder known as NAC and also the chance of having bleeding which is uh, often seen in premature babies in the brain. So cutting the cord a little later than what we used to do gives our babies a lot of benefits. In healthcare nothing comes free in the sense there's always a price to pay. So whenever we delay the cord clamping uh, of the umbilical cord there is a chance that the baby would need a little bit more phototherapy or management of the jaundice which normally a baby gets after delivery. So whenever we do cord clamping a little later, we have to inform a pediatrician like, uh, you know, watch out for a little bit of excess jaundice. But the benefits, the overall benefits of delayed cord clamping far outweigh all the disadvantages of uh, these slight increased levels of jaundice and the need of phototherapy. Of course, when we a delay the cord clamping um, there's a possibility that the mother could be having a little more bleeding and that's something your obstetrician would have to take care of so what do we do once a baby is delivered so as soon as a baby is delivered we'll be warming it up we'll be doing a bit of suction of the mouth if required uh, our pediatrician will be looking at the baby which is in my lap and uh, making sure it's doing well you could hold your baby you could touch your baby you could have a bit of skin to skin contact um, in this two to three minutes when we're waiting for the all the blood from the placenta to drink to my baby. And once the pulsation in the cord is over or it's one to two minutes is done, we'll clamp the cord and then we'll be uh, giving you the baby to take care of or we'll be giving to the pediatrician just for a cursory checkup. Of course, once the uh, baby is given to the pediatrician, then of course, then we'll do our routine stuff of delivering the placenta and if any stitches are required to be done, that will be done there. So what are the situations where I probably should not do delayed cord clamping? One is when we deliver a baby and we realize that the baby probably needs emergency care or uh, maybe resuscitation by the pediatrician. In that case, we clamp the cord and give it to the baby's doctor so he can do his resuscitation. Another situation is when uh, the mother's condition is not doing very well, the mother is bleeding a lot. So we'll clamp the cord and give it to the pediatrician so we can go about taking care of the mother. So barring these two situations of life-threatening situations to the baby and life-threatening situation to the mother, nearly in all cases, uh, we would be recommending that we do a delayed cord clamping. So why not discuss this with your doctor at your next antenatal visit? Yeah? All right, I'll be seeing you soon. Bye.